Hi everyone, uh, Rio Grand Fan back here with another ESU tutorial video. Some folks have asked about moving horns around and getting your own uh, horn from uh, maybe a template pack added to a sound file. Well, since ESU has yet to release a new template pack uh, for some of their newer horn recordings, I thought I'd show this in a video that you can actually transfer horns from one sound file to another sound file. So the sound files are actually like their own template pack. So every horn that ESU currently has out is now actually available for use in every sound file, any sound file. So uh, that's the cool part about this. So I've got two sound files open. These are recently posted sound files. We have S0508 and S0708 both listed as hi-fi on the ESU website for the new version 5, the V5 DCC decoder. So if we look here, you'll see if you look at the information tab on the far, far left, you can see, scrolling down, you can see the horn list of every horn that's in the file. And you can see these two don't match. We've got second generation horn pack 1, and over here we have first generation horn pack 2. Now as long as there's space, which is indicated by this little blue bar up here, you can actually move horns from one to the other and you can have as many horns as will fit on the, on the sp in the space of the decoder. So let's say uh, over here on our one on the right we want one of the horns from the left sound file. We want maybe the uh, the Nathan K3LA because uh, it's not showing up over here. So the way we do this is we just click on the sound tab and then you want to find sound slot 3 the first generation horn pack 2 and we want to double click this and you'll get the list. Do the same thing over here sound and then sound slots 3 double click and we have the same horns here in here. So what we got to do is we're going to take this on the receiving sound file grab this mute just click it once it'll highlight it drag the uh, box to make it a little bigger and then come over here to the horn we want. We said we wanted the K3LA. You can uh, do this a couple different ways. We can grab it just by clicking and dragging over. And then you have to grab the box and the two arrows, the, the in and out arrows, so they highlight just like that. That's the easiest way. You can also hold down Shift and click each item individually if you want to make sure that you're just getting the two arrows and the sound. Either way works. Once you do it, uh, you know, uh, have it highlighted, you can just do a control C, click back in the receiving side sound file, and hit control V to paste it in. And it pasted it up here, kind of dumb. So we're just going to grab it and we're going to move it down so that we can still see everything. And we're going to drop it right there. Now you see the two arrows are red. So we have to click them once and then just drag this little box over, click the other red arrow, drag the little box over so they turn black. Once you've gotten that in there, now it's the last sound file on the list. So we have to do a couple other things. We have to make sure that it understands that it's the last one. Right now we have F equals true and SV9 equals 6 for two different horns. So that's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to actually tell this one it's the newest one in the, or the next one in the line. So to do that, we're going to make it 13 because this one ends in 12. We're going to click this line here, and up here you'll see sound CV9 equals 6. If we double click that over here, we can change this 13 to a, or a 6 to a 13. And then we can change in the operation that we want it to be greater than or equal to 13. Just like you see here on 12 was the last one. It had greater than or equal to 12. So now we have greater than or equal to 13. Click in the white and it changes it. But now we can't have greater than or equal to 12. So we have to click this line, double click this, and then just change this to an equals and say OK. So now we have equals 11, equals 12, and then greater than or equal to 13. That way, if this CV 
sound CV9 gets set higher than 13, if you say 14 for instance, this same horn will play. If you set it to 15, 16, anything higher than 13, it basically means this horn will play. And there's no conflicts now by any other horns. So you can only play one horn at a time. That's really all you got to do. Then basically we just write it to the decoder. So no matter whatever you do here in the sound schedule, you still have to then come up here and write the sound data, which takes about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on the file. This one's a little smaller, so it might not take as long. But that's uh, pretty much how you move horns around. And then when you're ready to use the horn, you just come back here to decoder, sound slot settings, click on your sound CV9 for horn, and then we made it uh, number 13, so just bring that up to a 13, and, uh, and it'll, it'll do it. You can actually do this before you write the whole sound file, or you can write the sound file and then come in here, change this, and then write the data by using the red arrow by itself here. You can also listen to the horn if you come down here to sound slot 3 and hit the preview button, the horn will then play. Um, I don't know if it'll work through the speakers, so I'm not going to do it, but just uh, just know you can do that. You can also hear the prime mover and everything, just as long as you select it. Most of these will play, some of them don't, but that's pretty much all you got to do to add a new horn. And uh, if anyone has any questions, let me know. But uh, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope you got some good information out of it. Rio Grande fan out.